Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to talk about DRAMless SSDs that is SSDs that do not feature onboard memory. 2024 has already started to see several prominent releases in the world of solid state drives not to arrive with either DRAM on board or releasing controllers from big companies like Fizon with the E31T that are specifically designed for SSD that don't use DRAM. For those that aren't aware, an SSD is mainly made up of three primary components. There are some minor components, but these main three generally are the controller, which is kind of the CPU of the SSD, there is the NAND or the NAND flash, that's where the data lives, and finally the DRAM or the memory. All components we associate with computers shrunk down to this tiny, tiny scale. But newer generation SSDs like this one, the Samsung 990 Evo, which is a hybrid Gen 4, Gen 5 drive, are rocking out the gate without it. So is there an argument that modern SSDs no longer require DRAM? Is the fact that there is a glut of these new DRAMless SSDs and development into the field of memory free SSDs? SSDs a good thing. This video I'm going to give you five reasons why DRAMless SSDs may well best suit your needs and your requirements for your PC, Mac, gaming or whatever system. But I'm also going to give you five reasons why they might be bad for you and why you should go ahead and go for a traditional SSD today. So let's crack on with number one. Come on, it was always going to be the big one, the price. Um, DRAMless SSDs, with the exception of a very small number of enterprise grade SSDs, are always lower in price than SSDs that have got DRAM on board. What do I mean by that? Well, when you look at brands like WD and their popular WD Black series, the WD Black SN850 or the, AS, uh, the SN850X are Gen 4 SSDs that have DRAM on board and they arrive uh, the 1TB model for example is $84 right now at the time of recording. Now they also have a DRAMless WD Black drive as well the SN7700 released uh, I think two thirds of the way through 2022 that one arrives right now at $69 per terabyte. The 1TB model has even seen several discounts over the last year and the result is once you spread that out into say Samsung's releases when you go with some of the other names in the SSD sector using first or third party controllers you find out that SSDs without DRAM are about 20 to 25 percent cheaper per terabyte. That's for two main reasons. The first one of course is the lack of DRAM is a component they no longer have to buy. They don't have to fit that into production there. Also you find that DRAMless SSDs tend to use larger individual blocks of NAND. So rather than a larger scale SSD like this 4TB drive that has got NAND on either side, what you'll find with a lot of DRAMless SSDs, even the larger capacities, is that they use larger blocks of NAND. So rather than, in the case of this one, four 1TB blocks of NAND, they'll have two 2TB blocks of NAND or a single 2TB block for a 2TB drive. Fewer components, be they DRAM or any component, will always lead to power efficiency because you've got less components to managing most of the tasks. And one of the ways in which SSDs are able, uh, without DRAM on board, to maintain that performance is using something called HMB, Host Memory Buffer. This is a means with which the SSD can provision and reserve some of the memory that the host system, the PC or Mac system, it will reserve a little bit of that memory to be used as if it's the memory on the SSD. It's not as efficient, I would argue, in, as, uh, in terms of overall performance for the SSD than having DRAM on board, but in terms of power efficiency, it's great because the system is already running power into that memory and a small portion of memory that your SSD will reserve will make little to no difference in the grand scheme of things in terms of power efficiency. The overall power overhead of utilizing host memory buffer on the system's own memory is considerably more efficient than an SSD with its own memory on board in terms of power consumption. The scale of DRAMless SSDs, by the way, is absolutely fantastic. Bringing this uh, Samsung Evo here, this is a 2TB 990 Evo that doesn't have DRAM on board. This SSD, not only, as mentioned earlier on, utilizes larger singular NAND blocks, and there you can see that big gap there at the top where the DRAM would normally live. 
it results in an SSD that is way, way, way lower profile. Only having one side of chips there means it's gonna be a flatter drive. Also, when we're seeing things like the Steam Deck arrive and other alternatives to the Steam Deck arriving in 2024 for the micro power user PC gamer experience, and even things like the Nintendo Switch sequel, no doubt, arriving soon, these systems all require smaller storage components and DRAMless SSDs removing a large component from that online board and developments in larger NAND for the storage means that smaller scale SSDs such as the 2230 and 2242 length of SSDs really benefit in this development towards DRAMless SSDs. It's creating smaller drives with a lower power consumption which still give you great performance and great power efficiency at the same time. One of the biggest counter arguments people have against the Ramlet's SSDs is to do with performance, but the reality is it's actually a great deal more nuanced than that. And indeed, with DRAMless SSDs, if you're prioritizing read performance, you're actually not going to be too bad off. Whenever you look at the performance numbers of SSDs that are DRAMless, again, your Samsung CWDs, your Seagates, your Toshibas, your Crucials, you look at all of those. The right performance, and we'll get onto that later on, is generally dwarfed by relatively good read performance. That's because read is just accessing what's on the drive. The controller is already managing the indexing there, and it's been pulled into the system memory with that host memory buffer. The result is that for things like booting an OS or read-only databases, um, DRAMless SSDs are actually pretty darn good. And although you're not going to see the peak peak performance of a RAM-equipped uh, drive, I will say DRAMless SSDs in terms of traditional read performance are actually pretty darn good. As overzealous as this point is, when it comes to security, there are going to be some users that take it this seriously. Now, when we look at a DRAM necessity like this, yes, we know the the uh, NAND there, the NAND flash at the top is where our data is being stored. We also know the RAM, random access memory, or we can call it DRAM here, generally, when you power off the system and you reboot the system, it flushes, the data's gone. The reality, if you rake it really, really far down, it's not actually that simple. And an SSD that's got DRAM on board, in an immediate shutdown, or the drive being pulled, there is still technically data on the DRAM. It's difficult to obtain, it requires forensic level accessibility uh, at your disposal, but nevertheless, there is the potential for sensitive data to be on the DRAM. And for users, that 0.01% of users that take it that seriously, DRAMless SSDs remove that possibility. Yes, there's still the whole system to take into consideration, but chance start, they've already provisioned for that. So a DRAMless SSD is just another window and one fewer attack vector eliminated. But it's not all bright shiny news of course. For alongside those five good reasons, let's go through the five reasons why SD RAMless or DRAMless SSDs are simply not going to be right for you. Realistically, the right performance on any DRAMless SSD is going to be substandard compared with any SSD that has memory on board. When you're writing to the drive, regardless of using Gen 3, Gen 4, or Gen 5, and the way that opens up the bandwidth, that is still a lot of data being handed to a relatively small device with a controller that needs to manage. And utilizing host memory buffer still means that although it's useful to have the memory outside of the system in terms of power efficiency, write performance massively suffers. And you tend to find that DRAMless SSDs are sometimes two thirds or even half the write performance of the exact same drive with the exact same components, but with DRAM on board. So if write performance is important to you, maybe give them a miss. And alongside traditional write performance being a bit poor, it's worth highlighting that multitasking on these drives or multi-calls when you're sending lots of different tasks, write, read to the drive at any given time and recall is going to be very poor on a drive uh, that does not have DRAM on board. Having the memory on board working in conjunction with the controller together is always going to be superior. And you do find that drives that have no DRAM on board 
have quite poor responsive, but responsive when you've got multiple applications and services drawing from them simultaneously and tasks are handled way, way, way more sequentially or in a line than more randomized that you find with drives that have random access memory on board. So do bear that in mind if you are running a multi-user, multi-task environment or things like caching. Drilling a little deeper there into host memory buffer or HMB, it's worth highlighting that not all client systems that you're going to be installing this drive into support host memory buffer. Indeed, although a lot of Windows and Mac systems will use it, a lot of Linux systems will just not let it happen. You do need the drive to have a clear pathway to reserve that memory. And some OSs, some MOBO, some architecture don't allow it. And therefore, you might be using a drive that takes advantage of host memory buffer, provisioning the area of memory on the system to keep things moving, and the drive simply does not have the access or the client system you're utilizing, like a PlayStation 5, does not even have the protocol to speak the language to provide that memory. Durability on DRAMless SSDs has been something of a debate for a long time. SSDs generally have always got a question mark around the drive when there's no power put in it for a long time, whether that how long the data is held inside over periods of inactivity. Now, above and beyond that, we can talk about standard durability. And although more modern drives, including this one, have a drive write per day and terabytes written factor that is comparable to that of DRAMless drives of the same ilk, it's worth highlighting that there's still question marks and drives like this one that have 0.38 drive writes per day are actually more of an exception to the rule and there are a lot more DRAMless SSD drives with much lower durability factors in their lifetime and indeed some uh, DRAMless SSDs only arrive with three years of manufacturer's warranty not five it's becoming fewer and fewer to find those drives but they do still exist and because of the fewer NAND components on board that means there is the question of heat and overwrite because instead of say a 2TB drive made up of four uh, 512 gigabyte NAND modules being read and written to dividing that you end up with either one 2TB block or two 1TB blocks that increases the activity on those and therefore increases temperatures it also increases power and can affect durability again this is a minor point with more modern drives and unless you're using a drive that utilizes QLC NAND check out my other videos on QLC NAND it's less of a problem now but it's still a factor and particularly if you're looking at DRAMless SSDs prior to around 2020 2021 it's still something of a consideration Those weakened write speed, those bad multitasking elements that I mentioned earlier on that are kind of part and parcel with DRAMless SSDs all add up to one killer bottleneck factor known as oversaturation. Oversaturation is when there's just too much data going to a drive to handle. And even though we're seeing Gen 5 drives like this Samsung 990 Evo with a Gen 5 controller and that fires on E31T controller, we've already started seeing appearing on things like the Ting Group or the Patriot DRAMless Gen 5 SSD. These are still drives that are going to be subject to oversaturation because not having that DRAM on board means the drive has very limited spec with how much it can do at any given time and the overarching right to the drive. And that oversaturation means that although it has um, reported performance numbers, 4,000, 5,000, even 6,000 in some cases, bear in mind that the sustained performance of that number will dip quite rapidly, particularly with high volume, low frequency, or vice versa, in fact. Indeed, except for traditional read-write operations, oversaturation is something a lot of DRAMless drive users are going to have to, you know, be prepared to suffer. And ultimately, the larger your overflow of data and operation to this drive is, the more likely it is that you need DRAM on the drive and not be overly reliant on host memory buffer and a drive that doesn't have the components on board. But this has been the advantages and disadvantages of DRAMless SSDs. Let me know if this helped you. And of course, we've already done reviews on a bunch of them, like this one. We've mentioned that 990 Evo and the WD Black SN 7700. They should be linked in the description. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Free advice on the NAS Compare section right inside of every single page, along with the NAS Builder 2. Use our Discord. Use our Ask.NAS Compares forum for community support. Use our Ko-Fi or Coffee or Patreon if you need further support as well. And if you need expediated support or a Zoom contact, 
consultation with your setup, those options are present on Ko-Fi too. But apart from that, I will see you next time.